Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across the island chain. She's energizing kids and making math more accessible and making it more fun. See how a Seabury Hall high school senior has launched two community service projects that benefit students across the island of Maui. We meet several high school students who may be over-caffeinated. And we profile a beloved teacher at Aliamanu Middle School who has taught there for 45 years. We examine the rising number of ACL injuries among the high school student athletes. And learn how to obtain your Hawaii Drivers Learner's Permit. And learn about the close bond between a son and his father who has coached him on 27 sports teams. All on this episode of Hiki no, coming to you from Kapa'a Middle School on Kauai, home of the Hawaiian Sea Turtle. We are Honu. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network, Hiki no. Can do! Our school, Kapa'a Middle, is located on Olahana Road on the east side of Kauai. You can find our school sitting atop a plateau on 18 acres of land, observing amazing mountain and ocean views. Our school slogan is KMS is the best, and we often start off the day by chanting it loud and proud in unison. Also, did you know our school is currently ranked as the number one middle school on the island of Kauai, receiving 276 points on the Strive High Performance Report? Our first story takes us to the island of Maui, where one senior has decided to help her community by launching two different community service projects. Third grade, David's third Meet grade. Meet Jasmine Duan, an 18-year-old Seabury Hall senior who looks to her roots to find the solutions to her community's problems. Being raised by entrepreneurs, my parents have really motivated me to start projects about causes that I care about, and um, that's kind of one of the reasons why I've started the TEDx and the math circle. The Maui Math Circle is a student-run community service organization that was formed by Jasmine to help Maui youth develop a passion for math. She's doing a great job. She's energizing kids and making math more accessible and making it more fun. And I think uh, what she's doing is having a ripple effect across the community. And I love what she's doing. I wanted to help youth and opportunities for students to learn advanced math in the classroom. I wanted to help bridge that gap. I gather about 20 to 30 student volunteers um, high school math competition to come to Pukakui Elementary School where we teach about 100 students but we really want them to leave our sessions knowing that math is fun and that they can enjoy it. Running the Maui Math Circle would be enough for most students but Jasmine is above the mean and still manages to divide her time between it and starting the TEDx Youth Conference on Maui. TEDx Youth is an offshoot of TED conferences, which are held worldwide for the sole purpose of spreading innovative ideas. I created an event where middle and high school students from Maui can share their ideas, basically their passions, their stories, with the greater community. And I felt that there was really there was a lack of an outlet on Maui. We want to encourage youth to inspire more youth to share their ideas and to know that they hopefully inspire more students to share their stories and start following their own dreams. Some say it takes a community to raise a student, but Jasmine has proven that sometimes it takes a student to raise a community. I think my community service projects um, will encourage students to recognize that they can make change now and seek out help from the community because the Maui community is really supportive and they all want to help you and um, help you accomplish your goals and your dreams. Jasmine hopes to be part of the solution to the problem of disparity in education by going to Stafford University, make education accessible for all students at all levels. Just days after this interview, Jasmine was accepted into Stanford University where she plans on developing educational software that will help her achieve her goal. This is Caden Hancock from Maliwana Intermediate School for Hikino. And we're back, here at the famous Sleeping Giant Trailhead in the Wailua Homesteads neighborhood. 
This is one of the most well-known trails here on the east side of Kauai because of the expansive 360 degree view at the top. Hikers enjoy picking strawberry guavas along the route as well as the cool trade wind breezes as they make their way to the top. Some of the more daring adventurous may visit the natural wind tunnel to experience gusts over 40 miles per hour. For our next story, students from Moanalua High School on Oahu examine the growing number of over-caffeinated teenagers within their school. Popping open a bottle of caffeine doesn't seem like a bad idea. That is, until you're drinking one day, after day, after day. Yeah, I think last quarter, about maybe 20% of the time, I was just staying up all night. I am in yearbook, I'm in broadcast, I am in, um, I'm our class historian, which wherein I do all the designing, all the media aspects of our class events. And I am, I currently work two or three jobs. This isn't unusual to hear from high school students who are battling the even more competitive rush to do well in school and be a well-rounded person. Yeah, I think that's the biggest driving factor. Um, just they want to set themselves up to get the best job and they throughout high school they've been told it's really important to do well, it's really important to get into the good colleges. Advanced placement teachers like Mr. Sean Takahashi are oftentimes worried about the behaviors of their students, especially when it comes to sleep and caffeine. I think a lack of sleep, I think part of it is they feel like it helps them so they just keep on drinking it and it, out of habit. Um, but there's days where it's definitely, you can see it in their eyes, where they didn't get a lot of sleep and they need something to help keep them going. The American Academy of Pediatrics suggests a limit of 100 milligrams of caffeine a day for teenagers, but on average, a single can of a top energy drink has over one and a half times that amount. On a daily basis, I drink about two cans of caffeine, or of Monster, or, or one Monster, one coffee, either, either or, but I drink about like two cans worth of caffeine per day. According to a Livestrong website article, caffeine does work to provide a temporary jolt of energy, but it can also pose serious health problems to adolescents, including stomach problems and anxiety, and even impaired mental focus. Um, because of caffeine, yeah, I do worry about my health. Sometimes I do worry about how much like sugar intake I do take. But again, I do feel the need to accomplish so many things, so I really, it runs through my mind, but it's not a priority. Because if I don't drink caffeine, I'm like, I can't function in school, and I don't do good, I can't talk, I don't want to speak to anyone, I get cranky. But it might be worse that teens are still feeling the effect of caffeine, even after they stop drinking it. I think part of it is they want to do everything, like they enjoy the things that they're doing, and they enjoy doing well, so they want to keep on doing it. And then I think part of it is just the pressure, where it's almost the easiest thing to give up instead of missing the the test or not doing well on the test and getting the B in the class is almost worse for them than the losing three hours of sleep every night for it. Despite the health risks of caffeine, a growing number of teens are continuing to rely on caffeinated drinks to give them the boost to do all the things they want to do. This is Erin Iwasa from Wanalua High School for Hikino. Hikino is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hikino Can Do. Now we're back. Here on the east side of Kauai, downtown Kapa'a is well known for its exquisite shops and quaint local restaurants. If you need to stop for a snack, you won't be disappointed in Kapa'a town. There are an array of local foods including Lao Lao, Kalua Pork and Cabbage, poke, and many other plate lunch favorites. On the first Saturday of every month, Kapa'a hosts a lively celebration of our tight-knit community during the monthly art walk. Did you know that nearly 11,000 people live in Kapa'a? Our next story takes us back to Oahu, where students from Aliamano Middle School profile one of their longtime teachers. Schools are like little communities. As such, there are people who stand out and become the leaders. At Aliamanu Middle, there is Ms. Pili Aloha Liloi. I've been a teacher at Aliamanu Middle School for 45 years. It's the only school that I've taught at. When I first started teaching at Aliamanu, we had 1,700 kids. Now, it's a lot smaller than when I first began. Ms. Liloi has mainly been teaching English during that time. Moreover, it is not often that a teacher stays at one school for their entire career. 
what happens is you get really used to going to work and there, it's fun and you enjoy every year getting a new group of students and trying to affect their lives and you've got wonderful colleagues who you enjoy um, working with. Throughout it all there has been one thing that keeps her going. Kids are very very um, resilient and they're, they can they they're they're good to be around you know they're fun to you know if, if you're not feeling good they're kids always especially at this age um, a lot of people have always wondered why I taught middle school because a lot of people say hey you should maybe teach high school but you know I feel like students that are in middle school they have the most growth potential well, she like slows things down a little bit and makes sure that everyone understands. And if the work is too difficult or looks like we're having a hard time, she'll make it easier or more simple. Her students have found success in various careers. One has even gone on to teach at Ayamanu Middle School. Oh, I, I love her. She's the best. Um, I learned a lot from her. Um, uh, you know, I, I credit her, um, you know, for my successes in high school. Uh, she taught me how to read better, uh, write better, um, critical thinking, um, you know, and I use those skills to uh, get me to high school and then to college. And, um, you know, now, now I kind of, kind of full circle because I'm here um, as a teacher. It is with the students at Aliwana Middle that her legacy will be known. She reminisced about a former student who recently visited her. He says, you know, that's what you always told us, that the important thing is to go out and get a good job and make sure you don't come rip off my house. <laughs> and, you know, he says, you know, and it's right. And he said, my kids are doing really well. So I think that's what's important, that, you know, we give the values to kids to make sure that they become good, active citizens of this community. It's no wonder that Ms. Leloy's first name is Pili Aloha one who is caring and beloved. This is Mickey Eller Gregorius from Ayamato Middle School for Hiki No. We're back at Kapala Middle School, the only public middle school to serve students living from the Wailua River Bridge all the way to the end of the road in Haena. The school offers many opportunities to meet the needs of its advanced learners. Honors math and English teachers fine tune their curriculum and provide each student with a unique challenge. AVID and the Gifted and Talented program provide students with a rigorous curriculum and the chance to fine tune organizational skills. With a total of about 630 students, our school offers a variety of technology including one dedicated Mac lab and several other PC and mobile computer labs. We now take you to Hawaii Island where students from Waiakea High School examine the rising number of ACL or anterior cruciate ligament injuries among high school student athletes. I got kind of slowed down on one hurdle, hit the third hurdle and my body went to the right, my legs went out to the left and it tore. We were doing some drills and my foot got stuck in a hole while I was pivoting. It just over rotated and it snapped. And I was ready to do my first tumbling pass and I went for my round off back handspring double four and when I landed it, I tore my ACL. Student athletes put in countless hours of practice perfecting their skills but all it takes is a split second of error to set them off their track. Shannon Carvalho, a level 10 gymnast from Hilo, Hawaii, learned the setbacks of injury when she tore her ACL at a home meet in 2013. The comeback was um, probably the hardest thing I've done in my life, but I got through it. ACL injuries have become common amongst young athletes, something that was almost unheard of 15 years ago. The ACL is one of the four major ligaments in the knee, and ACL stands for anterior cruciate ligament. Contrary to popular belief, the rise in youth ACL injuries are due to the overall increased contact hours performed by athletes, not by overtraining or increased risk in sports. According to the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, ACL injuries are due to abrupt stops or changes in direction, whereas overuse injuries develop slowly over time. We have a whole lot more athletes practicing a whole lot more, so putting in a lot more hours. So if you increase the number of hours that get played, you will increase the injuries. It definitely pushed me back a lot in gymnastics, but with physical therapy, I was able to come back to gym within six months. Physical therapy and support equipment play vital roles in the recovery of an ACL injury, as track runner Coleman Shavs learned after his surgery. 
for the rest of my life, I'll have to probably use a brace. It's a hassle sometimes, but in the end, it's going to protect your leg and it's going to protect your chance of playing sports for the rest of your life. Baseball player Devin Iwahashi has also recognized the future effects of his ACL injury. I'll probably have to do rehab on it later and I'll probably struggle walking. Despite the long road to recovery, the passion that many athletes have for their sport overcomes the physical pain. In Shannon's case, after I tore it, it made me realize how much I love the sport. Gymnastics is definitely my second home. This has been Casey LaGuire from Waiakea High School for Hikino. We're back at the Kapaa Middle School Media Room, where every morning students plan, produce, and perform the daily school news. Each quarter, different students apply for specific jobs available on the news crew. They are interviewed in a real-world setting and compete with their peers to land the job they want. Scripts are written the day before and rehearsed by the production team and news anchors. Our morning broadcast also includes student birthdays, school-wide contests, borough videos, weather, surf reports, as well as student-made commercials. Our morning broadcast can be streamed live at livestream.com and later referenced on our Vimeo channel, vimeo.com forward slash KMS Media. We take you now to Radford High School on Oahu where students illustrate the key first step in learning to drive, getting your Hawaii driver's learning permit. Getting your license is easier than it seems. For everyone, it starts with one simple step, getting your Hawaii learner's permit. The first thing you can do is study the Hawaii Driver's Manual. First, download the Hawaii Driver's Manual for free from the Hawaii Department of Transportation. Studying the manual will help better your chances of passing the permit test. Next, when you are ready to take the test, gather all your required documents, such as your social security card, birth certificate, picture identification card like a military or state ID. Have both parents take you to the Department of Motor Vehicles. If you only have one parent, you need to show proof of guardianship. You must also have $10 for your fees. Finally, you take the test, and this may take about 15 minutes to an hour. If you pass the test with no more than six questions wrong, you will wait in line to take your picture for your permit card. Now that you have a permit, you can practice driving with your parents and enroll in driver's education courses, either at any public school or pay a little more to take a private lesson. More information can be found through the Department of Motor Vehicles. We're back here at a fun spot just down the hill from Kapaa Middle School. Do you like skateboarding? Well, you're in luck. Kapaa has its own skateboarding, basketball, and baseball courts right next door. The Kauai Skate Ohana is a local organization that supports skateboarders around the island. Even if skateboarding isn't your thing, the Kapal Ballpark is a great place to meet with friends and just hang out. We take you now to Hongwanji Mission School on Oahu where we meet an 8th grader and his father who has coached him on 27 sports teams. Many teenagers try to spend as little time as possible with their parents, but it's different for Cole Miyamura. Cole attends Hongwanji Mission School in the Nu'uanu district of Oahu. His father, David Miyamura, is a second grade teacher there, but Mr. Miyamura has another role that requires them to spend more time together than most fathers and sons. I've played on 28 teams, and I think 27 of the 28 teams were coached by my dad. Cole plays a variety of sports, including volleyball and baseball. His dad has coached him in baseball for nine years. He has coached him in volleyball for two years. It's a little bit of good, little bit of bad. He, he's always there to help you, always really trying to make you better, even on the weekends and stuff. But it's kind of bad because he never really gives you a break. He's always kind of hard on you. Being his coach does influence our relationship personally because uh, a lot of times it depends on what happens at the court or on the field kind of follows us home a little bit, but it's a good learning experience as well. We can learn from, from the good and the bad things that happen. Make sure it definitely you, made me a better player because he's always pushing me and trying to make me the best that I could be, so it was, it's a good thing having him as my coach. Follow through. Okay, so give yourself a good, good placement of your ball. Despite their ups and downs, Cole and Mr. Miyamura's player-coach relationship has actually strengthened their son and father bond. Our relationship with Cole, both as coach and his dad, I think it's pretty healthy. Um, as his dad, we 
we spend almost 24 hours a day, seven days a week together because he goes to the same school I teach at and we, you know, are always together. So it's, it has to be a pretty healthy relationship and we communicate quite well. Yeah. My bond with my dad has grown over the years. It's yeah. grown a lot. It's actually much stronger now and we get along really well. As his coach, same. We, it's a mutual respect. So um, it's got to be pretty healthy. Otherwise, it's a tough time at home. Straight through. Okay, you don't want to have a hitch. As a player and as a son in the future, I hope that Cole will, will take a lot from me. Um, the fact that you should never give up. And always, always set your goals high and, and go for them. Uh, and you can always achieve what you put your mind to as long as you don't give up. So that's what I hope he'll take from what I'm teaching him. With that message in mind, Cole has learned to appreciate his father in more ways than one. If I had to tell him something, I'd probably tell him thank you for coaching me and being there for me over all these nine years. For Cole and his father, their experiences in sports and in life continue to strengthen their bond. This is Kisi Yamato from Hongwanji Mission School for Hikino. And we're back, here at a very important landmark on the east side of Kauai, the historic hotel Coco Palms and its surrounding coconut grove. The hotel was opened in 1950 and closed abruptly September 11th, 1992, the day of Hurricane Iniki. The hotel was destroyed in Iniki and is yet to be rebuilt. However, there is a current plan to start restoring it this January. The hotel rests near the stunning Wailua River and its surrounding coconut grove is an iconic landmark in itself. The trees were planted in 1896 with coconuts imported from Samoa. The coconut grove is home to over 2,000 trees, making it the largest in the state. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Heap You Know. Remember, all these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Make sure to tune in to next week's episode for more proof Hawaii students hiki know. Can do! Broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.